First of all, you don't know me. <laughs> We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl. cheering for the right team. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens. smart girl, rough girl, fashion but you're tough girl, you could sit with us girl. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens, drama, drama queens, drama queens. You guys, we have a really action-packed Q&A today. Our questions dun, dun, dun. are serious business. We're going to jump right into it. Okay. If you could have dinner with anyone in the world, alive or dead, who would it be and why? Mm. This is morbid. Can it just like can we just put a boundary up and it's like someone we don't know because we're all going to choose someone dead that we love. So, yeah. can it be someone that we yeah. don't know? Who's alive? Let's keep it in the land of the living, right? Okay. Dinner with anyone alive. Yeah, just right? somebody you want to have a meal with. You know Ooh. who I want to have dinner with? Jennifer frickin' Coolidge. Oh, that does <laughs> I just want to sit, right? Yeah. Can you imagine if we were all sitting around a table with that woman drinking martinis and telling stories? I would love it so much. Yeah. She is so funny. Mm-hmm. I w- I'm afraid to, like, meet my heroes. I really am. I don't know that I'd want to. Because, you know, it's, it, it could never live up to all, like, the people in my life who have been super influential, just sitting down and having a meal, I think it would feel anticlimactic. It's like prom. Like, you spend <laughs> right. weeks and weeks <laughs> thinking about it, and you get all worked up and dressed up, and then it's over in, like, three, day, three what hours. What am I going to wear? <laughs> um, yeah, that's stressful. I, just as, like, a fact-finding mission would very much like to have dinner with Elizabeth Banks because I like her trajectory. I like mm-hmm. I like her directing. I like her long marriage. I like mm. just that she, like, you don't really know much about her private life, but she is great at her job and seemingly, like, everyone thinks she's super fun. And, you know, like, mm-hmm. I, I'm curious about that. Um, yeah. And I want to see Cocaine Bear real bad. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it's great. I yeah. do have a friend who, yeah, who saw it. You got to be a cool girl to pitch that to a bunch of like, you know, established actors and have everybody go, uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The only person I can really think of that I would just love to have a meal with. <sighs> yeah. It's, it's, um, Dr. Tim Keller, who is a former pastor, the head pastor at Redeemer Press in New York City, a church that I went to on and off in the 90s. And then just over the years, he has had such an incredible influence on my life, my spiritual journey, um, my growth out of the cult that I was in, and finding my way from that back to an authentic faith for me. Um, his voice has been very, very prevalent in my life during that time and even now. And I've read so many of his books and he's just very logical. His approach to Christianity and the gospel and Jesus is, um, it's just very logical. It feels like I'm going to a college lecture and hearing something that is, I'm walked through why something makes sense rather than having something like really hyped up and I'm supposed to believe it because the the guy who's talking is like emotional, you know? So, um, yeah, I think it would be, I think it would be Tim Keller. I would love to just have a meal with him. He's had a big, huge influence on my life. Great. Joy, this is about, this is for you. This is uh, with season five and Jamie coming onto the show. What was it like (laughs) to work with kids? You know me and other people's kids. But had uh, you worked with kids before? Not much. In, well, in theater, I had. I, I'm, you know, I'm joking when I talk about other people's kids. I, I do love kids. Um, and and Jackson was. Uh, <sighs> He was he was mature for his age. He was so smart and funny and um, easy to interact with, and he was good at memory memorizing all his lines. And um, he was fun. It was fun to work with Jackson. Yeah, I had fun. Mm-hmm. I liked working with kids because you could only work like a certain number of hours. 
That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> It was just like, well, it's six hours. I guess we're all going home. Hope y'all got what you needed. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I loved the storylines that I got to have with him. And it was also just really fun to have a kid around who was so excited. You know, mm-hmm. the the novelty of anything wears off. And five years into doing a job and, you know, being with the same people and living in the same place, it's great, but it's not filled with wonder anymore. (laughs) What are you talking about? And then a little kid comes to set and is like, wow. (laughs) And then you go, yeah, wow. (laughs) And that's so fun to just be reminded. So I I loved him coming to join the cast. and, And, you know, even in later scenes when there were the babies around, it was just fun. Did I ever tell you guys about the time that Jackson and his siblings came over to my house and I babysat them? And ghosts showed up in the pictures. Oh, what? So these kids were like obsessed. You got orbs in the photos? They were obsessed with my haunted house and they wanted to take old timey photos. So we dressed up and I had them in the dining room of my house where the woman who lived there before me died. And I took these pictures of them and all of these orbs showed up. But you could tell that the orb wasn't just like floating light. It was um, it was like behind Jackson's head, but his head cut it off. But it was in front of all the stuff in the middle oh. ground. Like it it didn't Whoa. make sense. Yeah, it, it was wasn't in a place a where the light couldn't hit. Yeah, it was weird. Wow. wow. Those kids are that. mystical. <laughs> there was a whole gang of them. Yeah, he had his little brother and little and older sister, right? Yeah, the three of them. Yeah. Good family. They were sweet, sweet kids. Oh, I like this one because I love snacks. <laughs> what is your favorite midnight snack? Peanut butter and jelly and crackers. Uh, wait, you put the peanut butter and jelly on crackers instead of bread? Yes, ma'am. Interesting. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> What's yours, So I don't know. Ooh, I'm a popcorn person, but I make popcorn on the stove in a pot. I don't do microwave popcorn. Well. I'm like, I'm very, very passionate about mm-hmm. popcorn in general. Mm-hmm. So that would probably be the first one. And oh, next is like, if there's sour candy in the house, watch out. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find it late at night. <laughs> I have made the mistake of making my family addicted to charcuterie boards. Like it <laughs> is the Morgan kids. That's an expensive habit. My mm. husband and these kids, Joy, I'm not putting nice things on that board. You know, it's just <laughs> like shitty American cheese and some crackers and like some nuts I can find, you know, like whatever. Yeah, it's so but good. my family will all be kind of like angsty. And then someone will yell out like, you know, what we need a charcuterie board. And then mm. I'm the one that has to go put it together. Um, yeah, man, charcuterie boards are a big deal in our, our house late night. Fancy, nice. man. I have this dream of having a home that, you know, my friends just kind of like come in and out of. And and so I have this dream of having like a four o'clock charcuterie, like breadboard that's just mm. out. Yeah. Just at four o'clock, like swing on in. Happy hour and bread, maybe like every Thursday. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll make it happen. It's fancy. You go post that on Facebook. You just tell all those other <laughs> chicks in town. Come here. Which acting scene are you most proud of from the show? You all ready to brag? Mm. I mean, you guys, oh, we man. watch episodes together every week. And this question, it's like it's like the music one. I can't think of a single episode we've ever done in this moment. Yeah. Do you have one? Like, does it come to you right away? I really don't. I mean, I know which ones I enjoyed working on that I felt good about, you know, as an actor, when you do a, you feel like you've done the best that you can do, whether I'm proud of how it turned out or not, I don't really know because I just don't like, I don't like watching my performance from that perspective, but, um, Mm. I, I know there were plenty of times where like the comedy hit exactly the way I wanted it to and it felt good. And um, I think some of the stuff like when Nathan was in his wheelchair, I feel like there was some good stuff in there that I, I remember feeling good, going home, feeling good about the work I had done that day. 
Um, I don't know. That's about it. What about you guys? I mean, so much of it is dependent on how it's edited together because you could turn in an awesome performance and then it gets like paired with a shitty song and you're like, oh, that's the coverage they're going to use. Fine. Yeah, <laughs> totally. But I remember when the episode where Peyton finds Ellie's body aired and I got oh. the feedback like, oh, my God, you were so brave to be so ugly in that scene just your face because my face is like contorted and like serious terror and like sadness and stuff but hearing that as a compliment was like yeah i went there i'm an artist yeah, yeah i did yeah i just went for, for sure. it uh but so yeah i felt um i felt very connected to that storyline yeah i don't know i think the things that jump out like the vulnerability that I really got to do with Brooke at <clears throat> Nathan and Haley's wedding. Mm. I think about some of that work that I got to do in later seasons with Brooke and Victoria. Mm -hmm. um, I always liked it when Brooke would get mad and like go on a rant. <laughs> in I always liked that someone. too. That was always really fun for me. The really speedy, like mad, funny stuff. But yeah, I don't I don't think there's something that I go, oh, that's the scene. It's you can't pick one thing yeah. in, you know, a decade. But yeah, there's those moments that stand out that are so sweet. I mean, I, I even think about it like as it's all sort of bubbling up from my subconscious, I remember the conversation we had early on when we did the episode where Brooke and Peyton went on that boat for the day. Oh yeah. That and remember fun. we were we were watching that back and the three of us were like, "Oh, it's just so nice to see these girls having fun and mm -hmm. sharing yeah. and laughing and it was so refreshing to all of us." And I I even love those things and it wasn't like some, you know, incredible acting moment, but like <laughs> it was just so great and honest and sweet and I I like that we've had the opportunity as women in this show to do so many things that that mm -hmm. is more fun to me than perhaps one specific moment you're right when you said honest because i think that's what we do as actors we hunt honesty we're just like where is it and we'll walk through all the weeds and we stare through the trees and we just mm -hmm. wait and watch until we can feel it nearby and then we jump on it as you know and so anytime we're able to find that honesty whether it's comedy or drama we we love it yeah feels good it feels nice well hey guys would you ever go to space if you had the chance uh, yes <laughs> duh yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah but like now or would you like i would go but when i'm about 80 well, look, are we talking like, okay, you can go to space and then you come back, like you get to go for a week, or are we like traveling light years? I'm talking about, no, I'm talking about somebody buys you a ticket to get on the Virgin Atlantic flight to the moon. Mm -hmm. Are you doing it? Um, I think that I very much want to go to Mars. Everyone knows I'm a big Ray Bradbury fan and Martian Chronicles is a perfect book. <laughs> And there's going to come a point where, like, my kids don't need me anymore. And, um, yeah. yeah. When you're old. This is what I'm saying. When we're old. Yeah, but my kids, like, not 80. Like, I'm still trying to have some muscle tone when I'm up there so I can do some sporty <laughs> shit. So. <laughs> All right. 70? Yeah. 72? Like, yeah. I'm going to be a very muscular seven-year-old woman. Yes. <laughs> Done. <laughs> That's it. Space camp girl. Yeah. Yeah, I mean such a complicated answer my initial is like yes and if I could get on a flight and go and see for myself with my own eyes the imagery that has been taken by our astronauts and our you know space shuttles and the things that have literally changed my life like yeah. you know I have a tattoo on my arm because of the pale blue dot because of the 1972 Voyager launch like I I am so deeply moved by and influenced by the things we've learned from that vantage point. So I'm like, if I could go for a weekend and and see the earth like that, I would love to. And then the other 
you know, the annoying part of my brain is like the carbon emissions. Yeah. I'm like, I can't. I can't go to space. No, we're we're I holograms can't. now. We're holograms. We're just gonna like teleport there. Yeah, I don't know. It's like it's so complicated. I I would like to go. I would really like to go. And I also am sure that I don't know, by the time we're muscular grandmothers, there might be a better way to do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> which which planet is the planet you're trying to hit? Mm, I mean, I'd love to see Mars. I I'd love to get close to the moon. Yeah. It doesn't have yeah. to be a planet. But then it's like, I don't know. You see that crazy imagery of Neptune and Jupiter. I want to see all of it. Yeah. What's the I one? I want to see it. Uh, a couple of the planets have diamonds just like floating around them. They like have natural diamonds <laughs> from all the pressure just like floating around. And it's like, <laughs> whoever Ooh, figures that I didn't out. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just diamonds. That'd be cool. You're like, around. listen, we went on a little trip, had a martini, came home with all of these. Look at <laughs> these are my Jupiter diamonds. <laughs> the bougiest space trip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, number 10. Do you have any embarrassing or funny stories from set that you've never shared before? People ask us this question all the time. I don't know. If I have anything I haven't shared in 20 years, it's probably because I don't want to. Yeah. Also, there's things we forget. Like, you could tell me a story and I'll go, oh, my God, I forgot about that. Yeah. But I'm sure 10 years ago I told the story because at that point I hadn't forgotten it. That is true. Yeah, I, I wish I'd written these things down. The problem, guys, with um, our job is that it trains our brain to be – wow, my mic is weird. It trains our brain to be um, short, have a short memory. Yeah. So we, we remember l lots of pieces of information for a short amount of time and then it's gone. So details and little stories and things like that. If you want to remember it, you better write it down because it disappears. I know. I've always wanted to be a journal person and I'm just not. But I, I do agree with what you were saying, Hillary. I think some of them, the, the stories we've never told, we're not going to tell, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and that might be because they're hilarious and it might be because yeah. we're not trying to ruin it for everybody. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Kid, man. <laughs> I, I love that sentiment. They're like, hey, what's your deepest, darkest secret? You know, it's like, honey, I can't know. Let I me think we've been, I think we've been more than forthcoming. Yeah, let me have my things. You know what we I'll say? Um, I had never had to share a trailer before, right? And I was always so self-conscious peeing on my side of the trailer. Oh, to I still am. Oh, because I was just like, oh, no, Sophia has to hear me pee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try sharing one with a boy. Yeah. Oh, when you're no. 20. Sorry. Oy. Oh, yeah. So embarrassing. I'm so Oy. embarrassed. I just don't want to <laughs> pee in front of people. It's a weird, it's a weird share. <laughs> yeah, I'm not into it. Well, that's it. Thank you guys for sending your questions. Send more. That's so fun. <laughs> we had a little religion this week, some body humor, you know. Some space. Some space. This we is just like wrapped it all in. A great hodgepodge. We'll see you guys later. Hey, thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a review. You can also follow us on Instagram at dramaqueensoth. Or email us at dramaqueens at iheartradio.com. See, see you, you next time. time. We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl. cheering for the right team. Drama